Welcome back to the channel, everyone. The latest addition to the Forerunner is on. It is the rigged Ultra Swing. And in this video, we'll go over the install, the features, and one thing I do not like about it. Stay tuned. All right, so this is the rigged Ultra Swing. Getting ready to mount it onto the Forerunner, and I'll just show you how easy it is to mount. It's about 65 pounds or so, so it's not super heavy. You can do it by yourself. Um, basically, that goes into the receiver hitch, and there's a wedge right there, and you can see that this you need to grease up this area, and there's a 19 millimeter bolt, or you can use a three quarter inch socket as well, uh, that you'll put through the end and you will put a long extension in and tighten it. So what happens is when that's inside your receiver and you tighten it, this will start to slide back and you can see that it increases the height of that, which wedges it in super tight. This is the hardest part, guys, is get everything lined up. Sometimes I get it first shot, sometimes it takes a little longer. Let's see, ah, not bad. So anyway, just slide it in. And when the holes line up here, you can put your pin in, lock it in. Before you put that pin in, we're going to tighten that bolt, then we'll put the pin in. So long extension, 19 millimeter or three quarter socket, put it right in the receiver hitch. You'll find the head of that bolt, and then you'll start to see the, uh, the unit stabilize and shift. So tighten this up, that'll get the wedge going nice and uh, tight inside and expand. Uh, expand it and then 100 foot pounds of torque with a torque wrench or that will do. Rock solid, ready to go, one person install. All right, so I'll go over a quick idea of how the Ultra Swing works uh, and some of the features. So basically it's mounted into the receiver hitch. It's an actual very easy install and you are able to mount a number of different accessories and in different locations onto the swing itself. The way you open it is, this is the first step here, is this handle you push forward and it unlatches. And you can see it right there, the mechanism where it hooks on and then unlatches. And then it actually says step number two right there. And that is basically just pull this pin up. That's just a safety lock and then you can swing it open and you can lock it into a number of positions with that pin that I just pulled out. So you do need to make sure you open it far enough. So when you raise that hatch, that the hatch is not hitting the swing arm. So once you lift, you have clear. Oh, that's another thing you have to be careful for. This handle, if it's pushed all the way forward, will hit the hatch. So make sure you just push it a little bit in and then you have clearance there and you can see the clearance is a good amount. It's just to hit the tip of the handle. So once it's open, that's how it looks. It is mounted into the hitch receiver right there. One accessory that I am going to get, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to fabricate it or buy it, uh, is a folding table for here with the cutting board. They offer that. It's about $400, which I think is quite expensive. So I'm going to see if I can fabricate one myself. These rotor packs used to be located on the inside, so they could be mounted there. They could also be mounted um, with these holes and offset to the outside. I chose to put them there instead of the spare tire because my spare tire still fits underneath the Forerunner, which I like to keep it that way for a little bit. And I put two two-gallon rotor pack gas cans on the back so they didn't have to sit on the ladder or on the hatch and cause more issues with those struts that I just put on. It also has a, another receiver here to the left of this one. And a lot of people will choose to put a bike rack in there so you can actually haul bikes as well. So it's a very versatile unit. I like it a lot. It is very expensive. Um, it is very solid, but it's gonna do what I intended, which was a place to carry my, my roto packs and a place to prepare food, put my Coleman stove and prepare a meal when I swing that arm out. 
So let me show you what drives me a little nuts about this setup now. So when you put the vehicle in reverse, you now see nothing but the ultra swing with the rotor packs. When the rotor packs are off, I do get a little bit more visibility and it's not horrible. However, I am going to need to relocate this camera probably into a higher position. Um, and that requires more money and more time, but you fix one thing and, or you modify one thing and usually have to make changes to other things. I learned that when I built cars as well. So overall, love the ultra swing, but this little guy, um, camera blockage is, uh, is the next challenge. If you are new to the channel, guys, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It helps me grow this channel and I'm able to put out more content, which I truly enjoy doing. We have a lot more modifications coming to the 4Runner, the Ram Rebel. Uh, we are going to take these vehicles off-roading and we'll record those trips as well. Uh, we got to go out of state with a couple trips, expeditions, and we're going to do some outdoor camping, cooking, and things of that nature. So if you enjoy that, hit subscribe, stay tuned, leave a comment below. I do respond to every single comment on all the videos that I make. So leave a comment or just leave some feedback, say hello, whatever you want to do, and we will see you soon on the next video. Thanks, guys.